The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! This is Mick Shots, streaming live on DallasCowboys.com and the official Dallas Cowboys app. Oh, what a beautiful Monday morning it is here in Oxnard, California. The corner of Ventura and Vineyard is where we are. It's a day off for the Cowboys here in Oxnard, California, but... We never take a day off here on Mixed Shots. Not there at training are camp. No days off in training camp. That's no. exactly right. <laughs> Bill Jones, Savannah Hugh-Moller, and Mickey Spagnola, the star of the show, wearing his Cowboy Star this morning. I was going to put my head, my hoodie on, uh, uh, like Micah. A little chilly this morning. Fifty-seven degrees, Bill. You should have been over on the Ventura Harbor last night at nine o'clock when I was doing my sports guest. And it was, it, the temperature said 63 degrees, but the wind chill said about 43 degrees over imagine. there. Did you have a jacket Absolutely. on? I, I uh, had a sweater on. So, yep. Yeah. For our live yeah. shot last night on CBS 11 in Dallas, Fort Worth. <laughs> All I know is the other day when I took off on my bike ride in the morning and I took off and it was 58 degrees. And I was just riding and I'm going, is this heaven? <laughs> <laughs> and I took the the line from the field of dreams and i go no it's oxnard <laughs> <laughs> well we've got much to talk about yes, on this yes. edition of uh, mixed shots of course the team is off today we've had the ramp up period we put on the pads tomorrow and we can't wait for that but the breaking news yesterday was an injury that occurred early in practice during a special teams drill as sam williams goes down Yes, and uh, can I do like the newspapers do? Uh, I was told by sources, they told the DallasCowboys.com uh, that he had a torn ACL. Uh, they were hoping initially that it was just an MCL, uh, but I was told after they kind of did their hand check or whatever before he got the MRI that they feared that he tore his ACL. And uh, sure enough, tore his ACL, uh, did damage the MCL also. So uh, right away, before they even put the pads on, they lose a very uh, prominent player uh, for the season, uh, which is, let's put it this way. I do this every year uh, before training camp. I write a column. I started doing and calling it uh, Mr. Indispensable. But I decided a couple years ago the Cowboys had too many indispensable players <laughs> to pick one, right? So I started picking one guy that had to be relevant, uh, that had to step up and make a name for himself. Mm -hmm. Guess who I picked? Mr. Relevant was Sam Williams. Sam Williams. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. So I don't know if I was the kiss of death or what, but uh, they needed him to step up. Um, they lose uh, Armstrong, Dorrance Armstrong in free agency, Dante Fowler Jr. in free agency, and those were the guys that were in the rotation really ahead of Sam. And uh, my, my thought is also that I know Mike Zimmer wants to use uh, uh, Micah Parsons more uh, at linebacker and so the next defensive end up had to be Sam Williams. It was time. This was his third year, and it was second time for, round draft pick. Too. Yeah, yeah. It was time for the second round draft picks to start stepping up. And unfortunately, in a darn special teams drill, not even contact, and he goes down. And they sort of knew right away. They waited to uh, get a MRI report and. When you guys were doing Jerry uh, at the car wash, uh, when he was finished, I said, had you gotten an update on on um, Sam Williams? He goes, well, we we're supposed to get it around 3 o'clock, and it was like 3.30. And he said, I'm going to probably get it here soon. He said, but it doesn't look good. Mm -hmm. So they kind of knew. They were just kind of hoping. Uh, and then I saw him over by the trainer's room. He was on a one of the... Uh, golf carts and they were 
or, or the cart that took him away and they were taking him back to his room so he just got back from his MRI so yeah that's a that's a tough one and uh, you know we could spend a lot of time on his absence and what it means to this team and who has to step up but uh, gosh they just can't seem to get through that first week or so last year it was three torn acls yeah i mean you yeah. you have to you, you come to expect that it's going to happen you just right. you just hope it, it's not you if you're a player <laughs> you know I, I can understand every morning you wake up, a player wakes up and says a prayer that yeah it, this isn't my day you know because you see it around the league there will there will be someone will keep a running tally of how many acls there are around the league it's just uh, the list part goes on of, part and of the on. risk that yeah. goes on with this brad yeah. sham Brad Sham's line, and I'm sure he uses it every year we go to training camp. Uh, he said we go to training camp to find out who gets hurt. Mm -hmm. And it's just Awful. inevitable, right? Um, so, yeah, uh, feel bad for him just because this, this needed to be his year to flourish. It's his third year. Uh, he got here out of Ole Miss as sort of they looked at him as a pass rush specialist, but a guy that needed to play more football uh, to become a complete defensive end. And I thought this was going to be the year uh, for him to flourish and uh, – four practices in he's he's done for the season he's also such a key contributor on special teams just the amount of work that he put in last season and some big plays that he had it's a tough loss in that area as well but I mean when you're looking at the depth of this position that's what is a little rocky right now what mm -hmm. do you guys think there yep that's right one other note uh, as we were uh, getting ready and when Mickey talks about the car wash uh, what that is is uh, on one day during uh, training camp with Jerry, and then we'll do it again with Dak uh, later this week, probably on Thursday, I think, uh, all the TV stations get their opportunity to one by one do – Oh, a seven to ten minute, or in the case of Mike Ducey, a fifteen minute interview <laughs> in Sam Gannon <laughs> with uh, with uh, Jerry. Shot taken. Uh, <laughs> well, pull back the curtain. Okay, so Channel Four, which is Mike Ducey and Sam Gannon, they go first. Okay, everyone else just has one reporter here. Well, with Ducey and Sam, okay, they each have to ask a certain amount of questions, and so Mike's first question to Jerry, and we're, there's eight other TV stations waiting in line. Jerry's going to do these one-on-ones with eight or nine TV stations that are here at camp. <laughs> it's the first question that Ducey asked him it was about Sam Williams. Of course, they didn't have the results yet, but just how much he means to the team. And Jerry went four minutes on the answer. Oh, wow. <laughs> and we get, we get like five or six minutes is what we're supposed <laughs> to get on these and so <laughs> David Abruzzi BR he's, he's got the stopwatch on it and it's like he just re-zeroed it after the Sam Williams one Perfect. so but then you've got <laughs> Mike asking a question that Sam's got to ask a question and then if Jerry is going to go two minutes on each one all of a sudden you're up to 10 well, minutes. Well see so. I, I, I got there <laughs> after just after they started and I was, it, I, it was curious that, that nobody else asked about Sam Williams. I said, and then after you said that, it's like, well, they said all he needed to say about Sam Williams. And, and we didn't start, have it. Right? Channel 4 only had it. And so we just went yeah. with it. And, and it was also incomplete at that time. Right. But And that's the thing is you're on, you have to be, when in those situations, you have to be really strategic on your questions with Jerry because mm -hmm. if you – stumble and say oh what a great day it is here in oxnard jerry yeah to his credit on. yeah because he doesn't have a stopwatch on him he's just talking he'll you know he'll go minutes. into well, a story uh, about yes. al davis that yes. takes four <laughs> minutes and now you only have two minutes left right <laughs> and you got six more questions to ask uh but anyway prior to that we were talking about sam williams and jerry was saying that you know he has some Micah Parsons type qualities about him as far as his traits, as far as his athleticism and so forth. And I said, yeah, if you just go look at his stats in the limited playing time that he had, right. his sacks per snap in his first two years in the league, eight and a half, I think I, I did the numbers on it last night, it's eight and a half sacks 
and I think around 576 snaps. That that is a, a sack every 67 snaps in his career. Right. Well, if you look at Micah's sack rate over his snaps, it's a sack every 66 snaps in his career. Very similar numbers. Then now the difference is. Being a pass rush specialist, Sam Williams was usually only in on pass rush situations while Micah is in on every snap. And so that's you can't really take that literally. Uh, mm-hmm. But it does show the potential that uh, Sam Williams has and how big of a loss it is. Well, he finished last year third on the team in sacks with four and a half. Obviously, Micah led with the 14. Uh, Dorrance Armstrong had seven and a half. Uh, Dante Fowler was right behind Williams with four, Lawrence with four. So he had four and a half sacks. <clears throat> and around and 300 snaps. 300 snaps, yeah. roughly. So, yeah, do the math on it. It's it's like seven, a uh, 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 sack every seven sna- snaps, right? If, if if my math is correct. The, 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 your map is, your math mean, is way se- off. Not seven. <laughs> not seven. We're doing math 70. this morning. Uh, seven. Yeah. Yeah. Seventy. <laughs> um, so, uh, gosh, it, it, it's just. Uh, it would be a huge loss. Yeah. If, he has if it was every, every seven. seven snaps. Yeah. Yes. I had seven on there, and it's like I forgot the zero. Um, but yeah, um, and and what what. Um, Savannah was pointing out, if you remember a guy that's uh, 6'4", 255, they were using him as a gunner on the mm-hmm. punt. Team. He's Hollywood Henderson going right? down as a gunner. Or, or Dexter Manley uh, early in his career was a gunner for the he, he just for had to, He just needed to remember that you can't get <laughs> the punt return he might, before the ball's he might, exactly. he might save you. He might save you 15 <laughs> yards, but he I might also uh, – Give up 15 or yards block with a punt penalty. or whatever. It's yeah. been you know, done a couple right. times yeah. so, <laughs> Sam Williams. So let's let's go this way. So you lose him. Say Micah Parsons at linebacker. So you got Demarcus Lawrence, and then well, where do they go after that? And if you look at the depth chart, to me, it's Marshawn Nealon now. Hey, Marshawn Nealon, oh, yes. from day one out here in this ramp-up period, I mean, he was up there with the ones a lot. And uh, he's impressive out here. And uh, Mike McCarthy talked about him in his press conference yesterday, his maturity. Uh, Marshawn Nealon, uh, he's going to have a real opportunity now to get a lot of playing time this year in his rookie season. And don't try to dis- diminish his ability because he went to Western Michigan. Uh, a, this guy can play. Um, I talked to Greg, Will- uh, Greg Ellis about him. Uh, for quite a bit, and he he's just in love with the guy. He said his motor runs. He said he plays every play like it's the last play uh, that he'll ever play in his life. Uh, they love his motor. Uh, I was watching when the uh, – so they went 11-on-11 11 11 yesterday, and uh, the intensity was picking up. His pass rush was impactful. You know, they can't sack the quarterback, can't mm-hmm. hit the quarterback, but he was pushing people into the quarterback. Uh, so he's got to he's got to play now. He's got to step up because – I think he was going to play anyway. Even without this injury, he was going to play a lot, and now they need him uh, to play a lot. Because the rest of the guy <clears> – goodness, <throat> um, th- th- there's no really experience at that position uh, after, after uh, Sam Williams. I did get to chat with them for a little bit the other day, and I asked him kind of where his headspace was at, given this is his first NFL camp, and he kind of credited um, Demarcus Lawrence and learning from him as a veteran and just, you know, his mindset right now. He seemed very calm, mm-hmm. and he seemed very focused. So that's what I appreciated about Neeland. He, he's here to, to put in the work, but he's really looking up to Demarcus Lawrence right now to, to learn that skill set. So... You know, I think there's a lot of big things we're going to see out of him, but it's he, it's the step up. And I think that when they drafted him, it was with the idea, we'll see how much longer DeMarcus plays in his career, but he's the he was the heir apparent to DeMarcus Lawrence as a left base defensive end. Right. But he has the ability to play all along the uh, defensive line. And yeah. they'll, they flip DeMarcus – uh, and whoever's the other defensive end anyway. Uh, They're but, playing strong side. Right. right. Side. And so, um, but, but Neyland, um, I mean, it's a, 
I'm sh- when they give him number 94, it raises my eyebrows uh, right off the bat. Right. Because that's a mm-hmm. significant number <laughs> to give a player. And uh, tough guy, too, by the way, because in, in uh, I, I believe it was the rookie mini camp, um, I noticed that the second day of the camp, he, he wasn't out there. And then when they went to OTAs, when they weren't in helmets, he wasn't out there. And so I was like, uh, I, I heard you you had to go see the doctor after that first practice. And he goes, yeah, I had to get my nose realigned. He goes, it was an accidental hit to my nose. <laughs> and he goes, he goes, I, I could have played, but they didn't want me out there doing any drills without my helmet on. So <laughs> right away. The guy hit, so he yeah. sounds like a soccer player. Well, I mean, not a, a hockey player. Or, yeah. Well, got my nose too. realigned. Put a Band-Aid on it. There and played, Put right? a Band-Aid on it. He'll be so there's okay. a little toughness to him also, by the way. <laughs> well, Mickey and I got to uh, talk to Mozzie Smith yesterday um, for a little bit after practice. And uh, Mickey, what did you, what did you think? Well, two things about Mozzie so far. Number one, he's another guy they need to flourish. He no doubt. can't have any season like he had last year, uh, playing four snaps in a playoff game. Um, so he was one that I was like, okay, well, a couple things. Number one, it appears, and I think it's gracious for us to say he was 290 last year because I don't think he was over 290 after they drafted him at 328 for some reason and it's a mystery to everybody I ask why he lost all that weight well it appears now he's back over 300 he said he's probably his uh, ideal playing rate uh, would be around 310 315 well that's what you want for a nose tackle right a guy that you want to be a run stuffer to hold up things so the linebackers can clean up uh, in the running game so two things the day before or it was two days before at the end of practice he got in a little skirmish mm-hmm. and I was like God bless him. That's Sam great. Williams was involved in that <laughs> too, wasn't he? Yeah, I, 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 think, I think Sam so. was. Yeah. And, and it was like, they're, 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 he's got some red blood in his veins. <laughs> There's right? some fire, Get finally. It? Yes, exactly. Um, and then um, the other day, we, you know, when we talked to him, that was the first time he'd spoken because he looked like he was going to talk the day before, and then he got in a one-on-one, and he didn't want to talk to anybody else. Uh, so at least he admitted what his playing weight was going to be and he said that uh what they asked him about his goals for this year and he said it's a clean slate and i'm going it's a good thing the slate's clean you know start from mm-hmm. scratch but they need him to be a player because after that um you, you know they they drafted uh um uh, i keep forgetting the guy's first name rogers justin, justin rogers justin and seventh rounder out of Auburn. Seventh round. And then they've got um, Savannah's guy, Denzel Daxon. Or Daxon Denzel. I Denzel Daxon, it, yes. Get it backwards. Yes, from the Bahamas, yes. our international player. A, 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 a rookie free agent. And Carl Davis. And Carl Davis. The but veteran guy who is uh, who they picked up in year, November Bill. last year. And he's a great <laughs> teammate. He's a great team guy, yeah. veteran guy. Uh, but he's not a guy that uh, – will be getting a lot of I mean he'll get he, he'll be in a rotation right if he makes the team whatever but um, but yeah it's a this is what this is what happens when you and, and this is the whole uh, reason why there's so much consternation right now on the big contracts that are due uh, with CD and with Dak and then next year with Micah is you have to have players who fit under this salary cap and you have to have young players that step up and that's why how devastating it is to have an injury to a young player like Sam Williams yesterday because he at least had a couple of years of experience and now you're leaning on guys who may have been on the squad the practice squad or whatever the last Mm -hmm. couple of years who um, they see potential but they haven't done it before in this league but it it, it was not only at on the edge but also in you look at defensive tackle they lost Jonathan Hankins in free agency went to Seattle Neville Gallimore is now in Miami and uh, they 
they weren't able to do anything in free agency. It wasn't that they didn't want to. It, they couldn't because of the, they're financially strapped because of the money that they got to pay to – I mean, a year from now, they could have the highest-paid quarterback, the highest-paid wide receiver, and the highest-paid defensive player in the league on Which this roster. Which no other team has, right. by the way. No right. other team has three of those. So that's why when you invest a first-round pick on Mozzie, and even though it was only the 26th pick in the first round, the guy's got to step up. And, and if everybody wants to understand what maybe the teammates think of him, just go find – uh, Micah Parsons interview from the second day uh, of training camp someone asked him what do you think that Mozzie can be and he goes it's not what I think he can be he has to be mm-hmm. it's not like Very we got to sit there and hope he can do this this and this he needs to do it now and, and truer words were never spoken and he talked about how he's keeping an eye on him he's making sure He's doing what he's supposed to do, bring him along, get in condition, because he missed all the offseason uh, recovering from a shoulder uh, surgery. All so right, the we first the... practice he had, that's yeah, probably a good time to take a yeah, break. Yeah, this is the time to take a break. Uh, and because of the background noise here, <laughs> and we'll be back at Toxnard in just a moment. Miller Lite is brewed with great taste and only great taste. The Miller Brewing Company would like to issue a correction. Miller Lite is brewed to be less filling. What are you doing here? Miller Lite tastes great. Look, I'm just reading the script. It says less filling. That's not what my script says. Well, mine says... We'd like to apologize for the previous announcers. Miller Lite is, in fact, less filling and tastes great. Time to shine, legal guy. Celebrate responsibly. Milwaukee, Wisconsin, beer. 96 cows and 3.2 grams carbs per 12 ounces. Fewer cows and carbs than premium regular beer. Fall is here, and that means football is back, bringing all the delicious game day foods with it. As you prep for all the big games, tailgates, and watch parties, let Yokiero be your one-stop destination for all things home gating. Yokiero's fresh, flavorful, ready-to-serve guacamole made with real Hass avocados will score taste bud touchdowns as you cheer on the Cowboys. Yokiero's wide range of mouth-watering and versatile products can be found in your local grocery store's produce or deli section. Grab some today. The Medal of Honor is our country's highest military award for valor in combat. More than 40 million individuals have served in the armed forces since the Civil War. Fewer than 4,000 have received the Medal of Honor. The National Medal of Honor Museum will be a place to preserve these legacies and inspire America. It's being built right next door to the Dallas Cowboys in Texas. Help us honor our country's greatest heroes. Learn more and get involved at mohmuseum.org. I'm Dak Prescott, quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. And they snap it to Prescott, who looks right. It's not there. He escapes left. He'll run for a first down. Just like football, when it comes to crypto, it's important to have a team you can trust. With blockchain.com, I know I'm in good hands. Since 2011, they've been trusted by millions around the world to buy, sell, and trade cryptocurrency. Prescott's going to run this himself. Run it up the middle, and he scores. Whether you're new to crypto or an active trader, they've got you covered. What are you waiting for? Get started at blockchain.com. Back, back, back. To Mick Shots. The official 2024 Dallas Cowboys Star Magazine training camp preview is now available. This year's edition features scouting reports, position analysis, a pullout schedule poster, and articles from your favorite Cowboys writers. Get your training camp preview today at your local pro shop or dallascowboys.com slash star, where you can read... A portion that Mickey wrote. Of course, you have to. First story in the magazine. Exactly. <laughs> Is there? A, can we get a sneak peek of what it was about? Uh, it was just about um, a lot of the questions that they had to answer, and the fact that when you go 12 and five, and then lose in the first round of the playoffs, they don't grandfather you in the next year to go 12 and five. They don't grandfather you back in to the playoffs. you got to start from scratch. And one of the things I had Dak talking about, and, you know, he sort of talked about it when he was talking about his contract, was uh, you got to stay where your feet are. You can't be sitting there and try to think, oh, we got to win 12 games just to get back in the playoffs. You get overwhelmed. you got to right. start from scratch. You start over 
one step at a time and go through the process. So he was really good about pointing out that while losing that Green Bay playoff game can motivate you, it can't be this dark cloud over you the whole time. I thought he was, he was really good talking about it before he got here, by the way. Speaking of uh, what? Answer, speaking of answering questions, <clears throat> Micah was so good. And as Mickey said in the last segment, go find the Micah Parsons uh, press conference from Friday, I think it was, uh, on DallasCowboys.com. Because um, it, when he has, puts his mind to it, there he is so candid on every answer. In fact, I walked away from that thinking – you know what? Micah has already established himself as one of the top players in Cowboys history on the field in just three years. You just look at the first three years of his career. He's also established himself, in my mind, as one of the top five interviews probably in Cowboys history. Just to, uh, why uh, is that? Just, he's because he doesn't give you canned answers. I mean, he listens to your question and he'll, he'll answer it. He's got personality with it. And he's got a fire about him, you know, and he, he has a uh, – uh, I'm just thoroughly entertained just listening to him talk. I think last year – And that is a <laughs> promo for the Edge podcast, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, he, he, he answers questions in a way you're sitting there going, so does he – does he lay awake at night thinking up these things to say, or is it just spontaneous? He, he's like Barkley. <laughs> it's spontaneous. He, after his football career, Michael Parsons can be Charles Barkley on a NFL uh, studio show. Which I'm sure good he thought, already mm-hmm. has that in the yeah. back of his mind. Right? Yeah. Hey, yeah, he hosts his own podcast. Right. He knows what he's doing. He, he has that on-camera presence. Mm-hmm. So... Your interview with Jerry, did you learn anything that you maybe didn't or something that stood out when you got your eight minutes with him or whatever it was? Um, I'm, I'm not sure. Do you were listening? Did you learn anything? <laughs> <laughs> um, you pretty much know what you're going to get. It's and, yeah. and by the way, Jerry, he was, very, he was in a very good talkative mood he yesterday. Um uh, uh, trying to think through you know we talked about uh well i started it off saying that okay i had a dream (laughs) that uh vision when i woke up this morning that there's going to be not one but two contracts signed i actually was thinking this week but i couched it to say this camp right uh and i do think that's going to happen uh i think that they're going to get both of them done this sounds like they're getting closer on cd yeah right um I think that helps. You know, speaking of those contracts, and I wanted to point that out, these quarterbacks that are getting signed, they're all getting signed to their second quarter, second contract, mm-hmm. most of them. Tua, um, Joe Burrow. I mean, you, there's five or six of them. Right. Trevor Lawrence, mm-hmm. uh, so all of them. Here's, here's the deal with, it, with, with those contracts. When they sign them like that early, they can sign them to a five-year ex- or four-year extension, whatever it ends up being. But the contract then is over five years because they had one year left on their original contract. And the original contract for a quarterback, the base salary, is probably no more than $4 million. So if you add the total of the extension, what everybody says it's $55 million, but if you add the $4 million that he still had to play for, right, and divide it by five, then all of a sudden he's averaging $40 million a year over the length of their control over him. And so, you know, no one looks at it that way. I, I figured out that uh, to his contract over five years, He's going to average forty-two point six million dollars. If you factor in this year's, yes, the base salary. Because now, but what he's getting is for this year, he gets a signing the signing bonus, bonus right. exactly. And, and 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 now you can divide the signing bonus prorated over five years instead of four years, right? And so that's huge. The other thing is with 
uh, a lot of these contracts being signed, especially uh, uh, Justin Jefferson, uh, the last year in those contracts aren't guaranteed. So they give you how much it's guaranteed, and then the last year they'll stuff 43 million non-guaranteed money into the base salary. And so you can't, it, it, it blows up the average, mm -hmm. but it's not guaranteed. So right. you can get out of the contract for just, you know, it's a little bit of dead money. So there, there's ways that you, you can structure these things. Because Justin Jefferson's, if you look at it, it's a $30 million a year, uh, uh, a year uh, average not 35 if you take out that last year that he's not guaranteed. So there's a lot that goes into that structure uh, of how these things are. And th the agent wants you to think, oh, it's 35 million a year. But there's a lot of stuff in there that's not 35 million a year. So that's my rant on contracts. As you were talking, I was sitting there looking up Jordan Loves. I'm not prepared to speak on this yet because i got to look at all these numbers. I was looking at over the cap on Jordan Loves' uh, contract, uh, which was announced as four years, $220 million, right? Yes. Okay. And, uh, again, I, I can't speak on it because on over the cap, it's got him – out to where he's a free agent in 29, one, two, three. Yeah, so that would make sense. Uh, but I think his deal, I can't remember the exact numbers, but I think for this year he was due to make $11 million, something like that. He signed last year a two-year uh, make good, basically, right. a two-year $20 or $22 million contract. And so you're factoring that $11 million, whatever it was that he was going to mm -hmm. make this year, over the five years, and that springs down the average value right. of that. The other thing on that, Mickey, when you're talking about these quarterbacks that are getting their second contracts, well, with Dak, this is his third contract. So we've already gone down the road here where he got a four-year, $160 million deal, which naturally has void years on the end of it. And right. so, like, for instance, if Dak leaves after this year, there's a $40 million cap hit, even if he doesn't play for the Cowboys next year. So the Cowboys are having to factor that money into the third contract that, that Dak is signing. And so it's much more complicated than what it is with the younger quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. And the consensus this entire week so far is that conversations as far as Dak contract goes is that there's conversations happening and they're good conversations and they're positive conversations. So that's what the consensus is. When it will get done is the bigger question. Hopefully it will be well, sooner. And I think later. and I think what happened on Friday was very significant in the Dak Prescott. That that's why I think that the deal will get done before the season starts. Friday. And Can you recap? Because of what happened on Friday which was Tua signing his contract and Jordan Love signing with the Packers because now that leaves Dak Prescott as the only incumbent starting quarterback in the league who's going into the final year of his contract. So and and so the leaves have fallen off the trees now. Mm -hmm. And so now you there's you don't have to wait on okay right. what's a, what are the Packers going to do with Jordan Love? It's set right now where $55 million a year, uh, the agent number, $55 million a year, not factoring in what Mickey was just talking about, where you've got the last year of the current contract mm -hmm. for both Tua and Jordan, if you factor in, that is what you're working off of. So both sides know, okay, this is what we're working off of. Now let's come to a uh, consensus so on when it. They, when they had his average, what counted in the average was not only are they giving guys signing bonuses, they're giving them option bonuses. Well, the option bonus is, is um, sometimes it's for however many years it's guaranteed, but the last two years he has a $39.5 million option bonus in 2026 and a $31.5 million option bonus in 2027 that's not guaranteed so if you add that up that's what 70 million dollars or 71 million dollars in that contract out of the, the the total that is not guaranteed but they 
average that in because that's money he can make. But if it's not guaranteed, uh, then his average kind of goes down to about $20 million sure. a year. Yeah. So that's why when Jerry says he's got to ha ha see some of the leaves fall, well, it's not the package leave, it's the inside of the contract, the guaranteed money that you need to, to factor in because that's what you're at, trying to get to your guy. And as Bill said, they still got to account for $40 million of restructure bonus on Dak's contract. So whatever you pay him, that's added in because it's already there in 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 voided years all right okay so i pulled up two his numbers on over the cap and uh his deal was announced as a four-year 212 million dollar deal which uh, 212.4 or something so like it was that like 53.1 uh, 53. Right. million which made him at the time because jordan love signed late later in the day the third highest contract per season, 53.1. You have Joe Burrow and Trevor Lawrence, and now Jordan Love at $55 million per year. Okay, but truly, as what Mickey was pointing out, with the, they're, they're still working off the last year of Tua's contract here. So if you factor it over five years, the actual Drops. average per year over the next five years that the Dolphins are paying Tua is not $53.1 million a year. It's $47 million right. a year. So. so, yeah, so that's that's what, when Jerry says that, everybody jumps on him right away, right? But he's he's factoring in what the real numbers are. <laughs> that's why Jerry says he's good at math. That's right. <laughs> and despite, and, and didn't Jerry address that, uh, did Jerry address that with the media out here after the opening ceremonies the other day where he reads what the writers are saying about it and uh, that he's not good at math when he says, uh, if you sign all these guys at 70% of the cap, well, Jerry is factoring in all that dead money. Uh, right. That he's got too. to account for right. it, right? It's a, it's a salary cap. That's how issue. he got to 70%. Right. Because <laughs> if, if you looked at it realistically, say they gave Dak $60 mil, million a year and they give Lamb and Parsons $40 million a year. So add that up. 60, 40, that's 100, and 140 million. The cap this year, for an example, is 255. So three guys are basically taking up half of your cap. And then if you add the dead money in there, that's how he got to 70. And, and the reason yeah, why up. Jerry says he knows better than anybody living about the future of the salary cap is, I mean, he told us the other, he spent eight or 10 days in LA earlier this month where that uh, Sunday ticket trial is going on, and he right. was one of the witnesses on there. And so, which could cost them right. money, which would lower uh, the salary yeah. cap and for so the next year. Until that gets resolved, you don't know for sure. So but. one last thing on this, and I'm tired of hearing it, just sign them, right? You don't know what the other side's asking for. Everybody's like, well, Justin Jefferson, there it is, $35 million a year. Well, if I'm the agent, 35 is my low part, right? I want 40. <laughs> it's the You're same agent, more, too. Of course. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it's exactly. Agency. So it's like, I want 40. Uh, so you don't know what they're asking for. And, and so that's why this idea of, well, you're dragging your feet trying to sign these guys. Well, those guys are dragging their feet getting their money. Okay, Vicki is off his soapbox, and we have Savannah's sightings at training camp when mixed shots continue in just a moment. The Medal of Honor is our country's highest military award for valor in combat. More than 40 million individuals have served in the armed forces since the Civil War. Fewer than 4,000 have received the Medal of Honor. The National Medal of Honor Museum will be a place to preserve these legacies and inspire America. It's being built right next door to the Dallas Cowboys in Texas. Help us honor our country's greatest heroes. Learn more and get involved at mohmuseum.org. Miller Lite is brewed with great taste and only great taste. The Miller Brewing Company would like to issue a correction. Miller Lite is brewed to be less filling. What are you doing here? Miller Lite tastes great. Look, I'm just reading the script. It says less filling. That's not what my script says. Well, mine says... We'd like to apologize for the previous announcers. Miller Lite is in fact less filling and tastes great. 
Time to shine, legal guy. Celebrate responsibly. Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Beer, 96 cows and 3.2 grams carbs per 12 ounces. Fewer cows and carbs than premium regular beer. Fall is here, and that means football is back, bringing all the delicious game day foods with it. As you prep for all the big games, tailgates, and watch parties, let Yokiero be your one-stop destination for all things home gating. Yokiero's fresh, flavorful, ready-to-serve guacamole made with real Hass avocados will score taste bud touchdowns as you cheer on the Cowboys. Yokiero's wide range of mouth-watering and versatile products can be found in your local grocery store's produce or deli section. Grab some today. I'm Dak Prescott, quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. And they snap it to Prescott, who looks right. It's not there. He escapes left. He'll run for a first down. Just like football, when it comes to crypto, it's important to have a team you can trust. With blockchain.com, I know I'm in good hands. Since 2011, they've been trusted by millions around the world to buy, sell, and trade cryptocurrency. Prescott's going to run this himself. Run it up the middle, and he scores. Whether you're new to crypto or an active trader, they've got you covered. What are you waiting for? Get started at blockchain.com. Back, back, back to mixed shots. Dallas Cowboys youth football and dance camps presented by Invisalign are back. Athletes of all skill levels ages 6 to 16 are invited to learn from the best this summer at Ford Center at the Star in Frisco. Campers have the chance to learn technical skills and lessons on teamwork from former NFL players and the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders. Two or three day camps are available now. Visit DallasCowboys.com slash camps to learn more and register today. Mickey, I think, has a weather report. 61 degrees, it's warming <laughs> up. The sun is coming but, in, I feel but, it, it's but there's nice. Some, there's something wrong with this. It said Oxnard, spotty drizzle ending in 12 minutes. There are eight, eight. <laughs> There's not a cloud in the sky. It's clear blue. If it drizzles, <laughs> it'll be a, a, a sprinkler system. <laughs> What is that? It That's will funny. be the sprinklers right here on the field. I'll tell you what, though. One thing <laughs> about here, if you're in the sun, uh, yes. there's a there's so probably, nice. I don't know what it is. It's 10 degree difference maybe from the sun you to the shade. You think it's the curvature of the earth because we're closer to the it's, sun It's here. the breeze. Okay. It's the breeze coming off that Pacific Ocean. Because the hottest day time of the day is when we have mike mccarthy's press conference. it is that's that's the hottest place on earth but thanks to and mickey <laughs> always wears a long sleeve like dark shirt and is just sitting there what well because i start off at yeah. 60 degrees and then uh -huh. all of a sudden it feels like it's 75. all right but have you noticed they've put carpet down so it takes some of the steam off the tennis courts oh okay that's very I true I didn't notice that <laughs> I noticed the carpet, but I didn't realize that was why. That was why? Or, yeah. Well, you yes. ask operations here. You're welcome. Right. Yes. <laughs> okay. You ordered that. I, okay. Well, I played a part in it, but okay. we love the blue carpet. All right. Uh, yesterday, Mickey and I were standing on the sideline watching our offensive line just run some drills. And Mickey and I were watching Chuma Adoga. And I mentioned, you know, Chuma the other day, we were talking about him on the show a little bit. And I said to Mickey, I said, you know what, Mickey? So every morning I get up around 5.30, 5.45, I go on a nice walk in Oxford. Quit bragging. Sorry, I, I, like, I like to get up, you get up early too. I know, you know, but back, the, in, back in the day, that's when some of us came, came, came in, in. <laughs> at training camp. It's like, how did, how did we survive Austin? That's all I wanna know. Well, one of the first people that I see walking towards the weight room every single morning is Chuma Adoga. And Mickey and I were looking at him yesterday, and Mickey even pointed out he looks like he lost a little bit of weight. He looks just healthier, a little bit more physical than I think we had thought last season. They're, they're listed him at 315. They're, and players uh, just off the cuff are – singing his praises i think dak uh i can't remember who else uh they unsolicited they brought up chuma as a guy that uh has really come on but having said that who was taking the first team snaps and tyler guyton left tackle yesterday Our first round pick tyler guyton you know what this was interesting my uh photographer at cbs 11 uh, bill ellis he mentioned to me yesterday he said man that tyler guyton he gets off the ball quick. I've never seen someone get off the ball as quick as him. And, and so he's tight on him, shooting him right. as, at the snap. 
and he he loses him when he gets off the off the snap. And so I found that interesting, which reminded me, I remember Leon Lett, and speaking of Austin training camp, there is, I've never seen a player get off the ball faster than Leon Lett did, especially early in his career. I, I, I remember watching Leon uh, out of Emporia State, his rookie year in Austin, and I'm going, who's that guy? I mean, just getting off the ball so quickly. And so maybe Guyton's got that same instinct about him. So early. when they did their, gosh, I lose track of the, the opening ceremony, they did a mock game, basically a walkthrough yeah. practice. Well, Guyton was taking the first team snaps, and I'm like, okay, it's the walkthrough. Maybe it's, they just it's, is this for show? Or... <laughs> yeah. And then yesterday, he when they went team, he was the first team left tackle. So they didn't take very long to say, okay, let's go. Right. Because they need it, right? As I said, and you made fun of me, Chuma's a good swing tackle, but I don't want him out there starting, right? <laughs> no matter what kind of shape he's in. And if you look at what they paid him, he got one of those veteran exception contracts where you get a little bit more, but it doesn't count against the salary cap. And so uh, he's in that boat. So that tells you it's like it's a one-year deal, nothing much guaranteed. So they need Guyton to step up and be that player and uh, it looks like he's on his way. Now, when you asked him about taking some snaps with the first team, he said, I just go where the coaches tell me to go, mm -hmm. right? He was very Same, downplaying right things, everything. Yep. What's your goal to play with attitude and grit, you know? And, uh, and I said, okay, because he was very talkative when he came in for his uh, draft press conference. I think he, he was just so giddy that he got drafted down. by his yeah. favorite team, and, right? You know, and then we get he gets around uh, veterans and and even with uh, Duke and the offensive line guru that he works with on a daily basis. You know, exactly. He gets great advice from people that know you're a rookie. You yeah, know, know know your place. You well, know. I I think the real work is going to come in tomorrow when they're in pads, and that's going to be a good thing to see out of Tyler Guyton. Even Coach McCarthy said yesterday, the padded practices are critical for the development of our team, but especially for our offensive line. And so we that's know what we're looking for. for. Well, you know what we're watching tomorrow. It's Micah versus Guyton. Right. Tomorrow. <laughs> And it may, and depending uh -huh. on what they're doing, it may be Nealon versus Guyton tomorrow. Yeah. Because uh, if but he's, but if, I want to see right, Micah, Micah versus uh, versus Guyton. So and, and Micah said Micah was asked about it. I think it was his interview with the NFL Network out here on Saturday. Uh, he was asked about it, and he said uh, Daniel Jeremiah asked him, Are "You going to give him a bull rush? What are you going to do?" I said, "No, it's all speed. I'm going all speed. Yeah, so, see if he's uh -huh, quick see if he can handle with speed." Line. Yeah. And that's the key like that. thing, right? Yeah. You because, need that. Um, so Michael was pretty funny when they asked him uh, about Tyron Smith not being here. I think his answer was, uh, I'm happy and sad. Yeah. <laughs> it's a happy and sad day. <laughs> sad for the team. Uh, just the way he said it. Right. I mean, uh, you, Savannah, you asked about what is it about Mike. You know, it's just – it's his – Facial expressions, yeah. you know, the it's way the, he's he's talking about Trayvon, right? Uh, and Toots, <laughs> and what, did the, you the see nickname, what happened? Toots. Did you have? He's, he's describing, he's, you know, he's like like this. You know, <laughs> he talks about how intelligent he is, how he keeps great notes and whatever. And but he walks around like a you, you know, know what, he, what he used Toots, right? Uh -huh. We used to say putts, <laughs> yeah. and it's like he had to define what Toots was, right? Uh -huh. And then he said, he said, and by the way, he goes. Uh, Tyrant was my welcome to the NFL moment. Mm -hmm. So when we walked off, we were right over there, and I said, what was the moment? He goes, I walked into the locker room and saw him. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, what he, and what he was saying, it's like, that i got to so play good. guys like that. Uh -huh. right? that you know, when you see, when you see, and think about Tyrant. When you see him, when he's got those knee braces on his elbows and, and, and he's got his helmet on, he looks like the the gladiator they show at the beginning of the Fox pregame show or whatever, you know, that big thing there. <laughs> and and by the way, you asked me about Jerry's interview yesterday, and I prefaced the, my Tyler Guyton question by saying that Tyron Smith no longer here right. for the first time in 12 years or whatever. And 
but my question is about Tyler, but Jerry wanted to talk about Tyron first. And you talk about a player that uh, Jerry has immense respect for. Tyron Smith is going into that ring of honor probably as soon as he retires Without in Jerry's doubt. mind. Yeah. And then five years later into the Pro Football yeah, Hall right. of Fame. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and what, uh, somebody had told me one of the reasons, well, one of the reasons, he got guaranteed $12 million, right? Mm-hmm. Um, because they gave him, like, these playing uh, game incentives. Yep. But he had accomplished all those this past year, so it's gar- they have to account for that money. Oh, if, he doesn't, if he doesn't do it, then they get a rebate next year. So it wasn't that whatever the base salary was the Cowboys couldn't match. It was the guaranteed it, That uh, was like the money. poison pill. Yes, yes, <laughs> exactly. It was, but somebody told me, well, one of the reasons he went there was they're going to probably, with Aaron Rodgers on the field, throw the ball more than he would have to run block. And that's the easier on him pass blocking than having to run block. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, he's not here. And Micah, that was what a great answer. I'm happy and sad. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a happy and sad day for us, too. It's sad because. We're not going to see each other the rest of the day, but it's happy because we're off the rest of the day. Or at least maybe y'all are. Yes, uh, absolutely. Sort of. yeah. Got a little TV to do, okay. but other than that. Producer Supreme is working hard on a day off for the players, and we appreciate his work as always. We're out of time here. Already. <laughs> what do you say we do it again uh, Wednesday? That's better than waiting for... What, I'm here for it. How many days we wait before, uh, since ever, the last from, show? Five days? Well, since so last Thursday. Four days. Yeah, yeah. Four uh, days. Four. And okay. so on Wednesday, we have our review of the first padded practice of training camp. Finally. Let's go. Can't wait for it tomorrow. Contact. Have a great day. We will here in Oxnard. Oh, <laughs> This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!